Hello and welcome to the council. Welcome to our counselors to UC San Diego's UC application and personal insight question tips webinar. We have are so happy that you've taken the time to join us this afternoon, and we're eager to share some information with you and to answer any questions that you may have. So, in today's presentation, we are going to include some sections of the application that we tend to get common questions about, and we will highlight these sections, go over the personal insight questions or the PIQs, as well as have live Q and A at the end. So, there is a lot of information for us to cover in this hour. So we're going to dive in. First, um, I would like to cover some Zoom features for today. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so it will be available at a later date on our counselor website, on our UC San Diego admissions website. We do encourage you to please submit your questions to our team using the Q&A feature, and we will do our best to answer as many questions as we possibly can. There is a team of admissions officers who are behind the scenes right now to type responses to any of the questions um, that you submit in the Q&A. And we'll, like I mentioned earlier, we will leave some time for live Q&A at the end of the program. You can submit your questions anonymously since this is a public facing program that we're hosting today. And we do wanna test out our Q&A feature and make sure that it is working. So feel free right now to share the school or company or where you're joining us from today. And we'd love to give you a shout out. So let's see. That would be in the Q&A if you wanna submit anything there. From Cypress College, welcome. Excited to have you here. Uh, Class 101, Conahoe Valley, welcome. Cabrillo High School, Lompoc, Lake Tahoe. Oh, we have folks joining us from all around College of Alameda. Got lots of folks up in Northern California. Wonderful. Well, welcome and thank you again so much for joining us here today for this presentation. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Jeanette and I'll allow her to introduce herself as she goes over um, the application with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. And hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Jeanette. I'm an admissions officer here at UC San Diego. Um, and I will be taking up most of the time today talking to you all about the UC application and kind of some tips and tricks to help your students as you help them navigate the UC application. We'll go ahead and start off with the timeline. Um, so our UC application did open on August 1st um, for students to start filling it out. Just a reminder that UC San Diego is only open for uh, applications for the fall terms. So um, if a student is selecting a term that is not fall of 23, they will not be able to submit an application to UC San Diego. Um, so just make sure that they're selecting fall 23 um, as they're navigating that UC application. Our application is now accepting submissions. So between October 1st and November 30th, applicants must submit their application and they must meet that November 30th deadline. Late applications are very rarely accepted. So please make sure that your students are not waiting until the very end to submit their UC applications. Um, just a reminder, we don't do early admission or early decision or anything like that. So um, there's no rush to get it in now, except for the fact that they'll be able to check that off their to-do list. Um, once applications have been received, we'll start notifying um, applicants of their admission decisions anywhere between March and April. Um, the deadline for first-year students to accept their offer of admission is on May 1st, and the deadline for our transfer students is on June 1st. Um, and then if we do have any students who are selected to be on the wait list, wait list decisions trickle out anywhere between May to July. Alrighty, so that is it for our application timeline. And now as we start talking about um, students filling out the applications, we do have some tips for students to be aware of and for you all as counselors to know um, before students start the application. Um, so if they haven't already, they should start preparing their application materials now, keeping in mind that November 30th deadline, it, it is fast approaching. Um, students should be taking some time to research the campuses that they're interested in and apply broadly across our system. 
Uh, they should be taking time to learn about the majors that are offered and also um, the types of courses that they'll need to be taking to fulfill a UC degree. Um, so just making sure that they're picking a major that they're going to be interested in and that can help them get to their um, both graduation and their career goals. Uh, keep in mind, some majors may have different names across our UC system, or they might be located in different academic departments. Um, some majors are not open to first year students or for every term, and we'll also want them to keep in mind that there are some materials they should be gathering before they get started. Um, so things we suggest students to have on hand is their unofficial transcript or an academic record. We ask that they also have a list of their current or their planned courses since it's part of the UC application. Uh, they should have any test scores that they wish to report on the UC application ready, and then any honors and awards, their volunteer programs, um, how long they were involved in these programs and how many hours they spent, uh, if the student was employed, their timeline of employment and their hours as well. Uh, we also encourage students to have their responses for their personal insight questions written and ready for copy and paste. Um, and then we also, you know, to encourage them to check out the resources that we have in place um, as students start filling out those applications. So we'll go ahead and jump in now that they're prepared to get started and they have all this at hand. Um, the first step to filling out a UC application is creating an account. Um, so this is the very first screen that will come up. We encourage students um, to use a unique email address and password. They should be using an email account that they can check after they graduate from school. So oftentimes we'll see students use their high school email address for those first year students. They lose access to this email account and they'll, they'll not be able to check university communication. So make sure that they're using an email account that they'll be able to check after graduation and an account that belongs to them. Um, so we wouldn't want them to use a uh, family email account or a a uh, friend's email account. Again, the email needs to be unique to the student and they need to have access to important communication from the university. Um, if the student has a family member that maybe wants to create the account for them, um, we don't want them to be using the same email, email account as someone else. Uh, the UC application will consider them the other applicant. So again, just stressing, making sure that they have a unique email account. Uh, the passwords must be eight characters long and must include a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, symbols, special characters. Um, and they'll also be creating a secret question and answer combination. So we encourage them to keep this information um, secure, safe, and written down so that they don't lose uh, their password or their um, answer to their secret question and then lose access to their UC application that they've been working on. Once they've created an account, an email is going to be sent um, confirming the account as well as um, getting them ready to start their UC application. So keep in mind that campuses will be using that email to send critical time sensitive correspondence to our applicants. So make sure that when a student is using an email account, it's also one that they're going to be regularly checking um, in the event that a UC campus needs to ask for extra information or let them know of an upcoming deadline. Before they get started, there is a st statement of integrity. So we want them to make sure that they review that statement of integrity and keep it in mind as they're filling out the UC application. There's also a common questions and answers at each page if they click the help button. So if there's anything that's confusing, they can utilize that help button to see um, some frequently asked questions and their answers. Um, and then um, after they log in, they will um, be able to get started on selecting the appropriate level for which they are applying. So today we'll be talking about both first year and transfer application. So it's critical that they're selecting uh, either first year applicant, if they're someone who is recently graduating from high school or is going to graduate from high school and will be enrolling. This is a student who is not enrolled in a college or a university during a regular session after high school graduation. Um, 
or they'll select transfer student. Also keep in mind, UC San Diego only admits students at junior standing. So if a student were to select senior standing with the intention that they would be seniors once they get to UC San Diego, um, they will not be able to select our campus on the application. All right, that was a lot of logistics. So we'll go ahead and move into the navigation of the application. Um, so you'll notice that there's a navigation bar on the right side of the screen. This will help students to complete the application in any order that they'd like. Um, however, uh, the about you section must be completed first as it contains critical conditional logic, which will be used throughout the application. So after they complete the about you section, they'll be able to move freely between sections as they see fit. Let's go ahead and talk about that about you section now. So we'll see um, a new feature for those of you who are familiar with the uh, UC application. And could I get the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the UC application and have helped students navigate it a time or two, um, you'll notice that the statement of legal residence is new for this application year. UC will collect information on the application to help determine residency for tuition purposes. So a student must choose whether they would like to be evaluated for California residency for tuition purposes or not at the time of application. If they select yes, um, they're going to answer some additional questions about the student and the parents um, or their legal guardian's physical presence in California. If they select no, um, they will need to select a reason for why they don't want to be evaluated for California residency. And then they'll acknowledge that they will be classified as non-resident for tuition purposes. Again, this is at the time of application, each campus um, may have some additional information that would be required later uh, once a student were to accept an offer of admission to the universities. Both options are going to require the student to answer questions that would determine if the student qualifies for a non-resident supplemental tuition exemption or a tuition waiver. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to the next section. So majors and alternates. On the view on the left side of the screen, um, you'll be able to see category view. Um, so students can select both a major and an alternate major if it's available to the to the campus. Alternate majors are not available at every campus. If a campus is unable to offer an applicant a place in their first choice major, they may be considered for their alternate choice, but be sure that the alternate major is in a subject area that the student really does want to study, and in some cases it should be a different area of study than the primary major. Note that not all campuses will consider students for an alternate choice major, and that some campuses may have restrictions on changing majors once admitted to that major. UC San Diego strongly recommends that applicants selecting a capped major select an alternate non-capped major. And we'll go ahead and move into the next section. Um, because we are UC San Diego, we wanted to talk about the college rankings. Um, so UC San Diego operates on a very unique eight college system. Our colleges are not dependent on academic interests. So they, a student can be in any college with any major. As soon as our campus is selected on the application, a student is going to be asked to rank our colleges in the order of preference. Um, and this is gonna give the student the best chance of assignment into their college of choice. The order of the ranking does not affect your admission decision to UC San Diego. So this is not supposed to be a point of stress for students. It's simply for us to be able to place them into a college that they see is best fit for their um, educational goals. Uh, the boxes can be used to rank the colleges um, only after the student clicks on the learn more about UC San Diego's college system link. It'll open up a pop-up window. We encourage all students to carefully read that information to understand the theme that each college at UC San Diego lives and learns by. After they review that information, they'll be able to utilize those little arrow boxes that you see here um, to move the colleges around. They can also click and drag um, to rank the colleges, one being the one they're most interested in attending, eight being the one that they're not so interested in being a part of. 
keep in mind that eighth college is new to USC San Diego. It will open up in fall 23. Um, and eighth college is not going to be available for transfer applicants. We also have a helpful website um, if a student would like to learn more about our colleges um, and understand the college system a little bit more, use, utilizing the link mycompass.ucsd.edu forward slash public. Alrighty, so we've covered all the general information that's asked for applicants up at the beginning. Now we're going to jump into the first year applicant requirements. So for the next few slides, this is going to apply to high school students who are applying as first year applicants to the university. So first and foremost, it's going to ask for their high schools attended. Remember that a student needs to list every school that they've attended beginning with ninth grade, even if ninth grade was considered a middle school. Students can select a specialized curriculum on the screen. Students can search for their schools by name, city, or by SEEB code. If a student can't find their school, it can be added by typing the full name of the school and clicking add. As they're entering um, high schools that have been attended, um, and could I get the next slide, please? They'll also be asked to enter the dates of their attendance. Students can also choose specialized curriculum on this screen. If the same school that the student is going to graduate from, um, you are going to select the certificate or diploma information. Entering here, uh, I'm sorry, in here you will also enter the grading system and the term system for the school. You can select multiple grading or multiple term systems for one school. Please note that students should select the grading scale or scales that are typically used at the school. Even if the school assigned pass or credit grades in the spring, summer, or fall of 2020 and or the spring and summer of 2021, we wanna select the grading scale that was primarily used. Okay, now let's talk about entering academic history. So once the high schools have been entered, a student will now have to manually enter courses or select um, the courses by grade level, beginning with ninth grade. First, the student will select the subject area or the course category of the course and enter it this way. Next, if a student was entered uh, or enrolled in a California high school, you'll select from the course list of the school. You can see the courses as you expand each subject area. So this is how a student will be entering their courses. In response to the temporary suspension of the letter grade requirement in A through G, courses taken in COVID-19 terms, spring, summer, fall of 2020, and spring, summer 2021, we will allow students to select pass, no pass, credit, and no credit as grade options in the dropdown. Now, what happens if a student does not see their course here? If we go to the next slide, we'll see that there's an option for students to enter their coursework manually. So if a student does not see their courses, um, or maybe a student is not enrolled in a California high school or was not enrolled at a California high school the entire time, the student must manually enter them exactly as they appear on the student's transcript or academic record. When entries for each grade level are complete, you'll click save and continue and move on to the next grade. You'll repeat this process all the way through 12th grade as well. So you'll enter 12th grade course grades with the default of IP in progress and PL for planned. If a student has already graduated and has senior year grades, you'll manually enter the grades. For courses that are only one semester long, you'll be selecting no for the term for which the course was not offered. For example, economics that was offered during fall term and not during spring term, you'll put no. For courses that, um, or I'm sorry, please include all of the original course grades. Um, so for courses that were repeated, we'll also want to see the original D or F grade that was earned. And then we'll see the subsequent repeated grade. Students who attend more than one school should be sure to enter courses under the correct school. Also note, new California high school courses being offered for the first time in the senior year may not appear on the school's course list until November 1st. So if you don't see a new course on that list, remember to come back to add it later, but no later than November 30th before submitting the application. 
Now we'll move on to the next slide. We know that some high school students may be taking advantage of college courses while they're still in high school. So if courses were taken at a California community college, a UC transferable course list will appear. The student will select the course or courses taken, the grade earned, or enter IP for in progress, PL for planned, and the A, G, A through G subject area in which the course fits. Only report courses taken for a letter grade, courses in which a pass, a credit, or a no credit grade were earned should not be included unless those courses were completed in COVID terms. Again, that's winter, spring, summer, and fall of 2020, and winter, spring, summer of 2021. Non-UC transferable English and math courses can also be reported in this section of the application. If there are other California Community College courses that are not UC transferable, please report them in the other coursework area that is found later in the application. If college or university courses were not taken at a California community college, enter each course and grade earned as it appears on the official academic record from that college or university that was attended. Students must enter all UC transferable as well as all non-transferable English and math courses and courses taken in A through G subject areas. Missing or inaccurate information may be viewed as falsification and may result in a cancellation of the application. All right, now let's move into transfer applicants. So the next couple slides are gonna be regarding the transfer side of the application. Okay, so uh, you may be familiar, we have the transfer admissions planner. So for students who created a UC transfer admission planner or a UC TAP account and entered their academic information on UC TAP, a feature in the admissions application will allow students to import those courses and the grades. The information is updated daily each morning with the previous day's data. Changes may be made to the UC TAP and it will not be reflected into the data imported on the same day. Once a student imports their TAP academic record into the application, any further information added in UC TAP will not be reflected in the application. The student can edit the information directly in the application. In order to import courses, applicants must use their UC TAP ID and email address from the UC TAP account when starting the UC application. Okay, so now college is attended. So transfer applicants must provide information for all of the colleges and universities um, that they have attended, including any institutions located outside of the US. Once this information is added, all the school information will appear in a table for review and for editing. Students can search for their school by name, city, or college code. Next slide. Um, for college information, um, transfer applicants must provide information for all of the colleges and universities that are attended, including institutions located outside of the U.S. I, um, once, once that is entered, again, they'll be able to review or edit that information. They can search by name, city, college, or code. Applicants will select the dates of attendance, the grading system, and the level of degree or certification that they received, if it's applicable. Dates of attendance should be entered as consecutive dates, even if enrollment was interrupted. First month and year of attendance through the last month and year of attendance. So for example, a student may have attended a college from fall of 2016 to spring of 2019. Students earning an associate's degree for transfer will provide this information here along with the name of the major. Applicants can also indicate here if the term system has changed. For example, if it has changed from a quarter system to a semester system. Moving along, now they'll enter courses. Students should use unofficial transcripts to ensure the correct term, course number, title, unit, and grade received. Grade codes are listed for our applicants. For California Community College students, the transfer course list for California Community Colleges are going to be pulled directly from the ASSIST database. Each department can be expanded to display the transferable courses by clicking on the plus sign. 
For non-California community college students, UC does not have a transferable course list for colleges or universities that are not a California community college. So students must type in the department name, the course number, course title, and unit value, and then a grade earned. All students must enter all courses taken, even if they believe they are not transferable. They don't want credit for them, or they believe that the old grade is not reflective of their current academic abilities. An academic renewal or an incomplete grade must also be reported, or if they withdrew from the course, or they later repeated the course. So all of these courses, all of these situations, they need to still report them on the UC application. Missing or inaccurate information may be viewed as falsification and result in cancellation of the application at all of our UC campuses. Okay, we'll move on um, to terms attended. The application is built on conditional logic where questions are generated from information entered by the applicant. So this is gonna be your chance to review the terms of attendance and the grading systems that you've entered. We'll move on to the next slide. In the event that a student has an enrollment gap um, and the UC application detects an enrollment gap, uh, you will be prompted to explain why you were not enrolled. So if a student made an error and did not enroll during an identified gap, the student must go back and adjust the dates in terms of attendance to the appropriate college and then enter the, enter the courses that was either attempted or completed during that time. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. Let's talk about UCE and UCM. If the coursework that you entered, if the coursework that the student entered indicates that the student has met the minimum English courses and math course requirements for transfer to UC, this screen will not pop up. However, if the coursework appears to be missing the required English or math courses, then you will need to indicate the student's plan to complete these courses on the screen. Note that this screen will also appear even if you're using AP or IB exam scores to meet an English or math requirement. So in that case, the student should mark completed with a grade of a C or better. Okay, now we'll talk about the transfer academic update, also known as the TAU. So even if an applicant is not currently enrolled and all the information was submitted on the original admission application, all transfer applicants are going to be required to submit a transfer academic update, a TAU. The TAU allows students to enter fall grades and list courses in progress or planned. Students must submit a TAU by January 31st to ensure that their application receives full consideration. TAUs that are submitted after the priority deadline of January 31st may not be considered. Students will need to tell UC whether they will be complete, will, whether they will complete the entry level writing requirement prior to transfer. If a student is not currently enrolled, they would enter an explanation in the comment box. If a student is currently enrolled, the student will submit grades for fall 21 courses and confirm or update their winter and sp or spring grades. Uh, students should check email frequently as admissions representatives from our campuses may ask for additional information or clarification of the information that was submitted on the TAU. Okay. So now we've talked about first year and we've talked about transfer. Now we'll go ahead and get started on the additional information sections that appear for all applicants. So again, this is going to apply to all of our UC applicants. There is an additional common section after the academic section. Um, so the additional academic comments text box is an opportunity for students to share any information about their academic history that they want campuses to know. Campuses will use this information to better understand the student's academic context. This space can be used to discuss any significant impact that happened towards their educational experience or any context we should be aware of. So for example, if a student changed its grading policy due to COVID-19, please include that information in this section. Transfer students will see this option too and must disclose any terms on academic probation. This will not disqualify the student from being admitted. 
Admission staff will look at the section for an explanation of abnormalities in a student's academic record, such as a break in attendance or poor grades in a particular course or year, or for specific information about the school environment, the policies that may have affected academic record and or availability of classes. There is also another additional common section later in the application with following the personal insight questions, but this comment box is intended only for academic history comments. Okay, so now activities and awards. Um, there are six categories in the activities and awards section in the application for first year applicants and five for transfer applicants. Choose experiences that have meaning um, that illustrate interest and or demonstrate leadership. These are just a couple of examples of the questions in the two categories. In other coursework, this is only available for first year applicants, um, academic courses that did not fit into the A3G categories or history and social sciences, English, math, lab sciences, languages other than English or visual and performing arts. So anything that's not that should be reported in this section. So this could include anything that's like maybe a leadership course, a religious study course. Um, do not include non-academic courses such as PE or office or teacher assistant roles that may have been a course. Educational preparation programs um, are not limited to AVID, Upward Bound, and Gear Up. So we encourage students to really include um, a list of programs that they're, um, that they're involved in, but there will be a drop down of common programs um, that may come up here. If a program doesn't show up in that drop down, uh, manually enter it for us. Um, community service, another section that comes up, this would be anything that's consistent participation over time and may indicate commitment and dedication. Work experience, so a student can demonstrate time management and responsibility and perhaps leadership. The honor awards and honors section, um, we encourage students to tell us of any awards that are significant in nature, um, maybe something that's countywide, statewide or national. Um, indicate a high level of achievement with significant competition. School-based awards are more meaningful to readers if context is provided, such as fifth place out of 500 students to earn the award, but even perfect attendance can be insightful. Um, then there's an ex extracurriculars option for any continued participation over time, which will indicate passion, commitment, and sometimes leadership. We encourage students to enter details about every activity that they tell us about. A couple tips for this section. Don't use any acronyms for names or clubs or awards. Um, please spell them out and explain level of involvement. Don't list the same activity in multiple areas. So for example, if a student was in honor society and they indicated it in awards and honors, do not also indicate it in extracurricular activities, but make sure that the most important activities are reflected in some way. If an applicant did not have the time or opportunity to participate in school and or community activities, volunteer paid employment, um, explain to the application readers why. How else did the applicant use their time and was it a choice or a requirement? So for example, student was caring for siblings, uh, elder care, commitment to doing homework, um, such as maybe any research projects or papers. We understand that students are gaining valuable life experience and consider these as part of our, as a part of our comprehensive review. It is also important for students to remember to describe their role, their responsibilities, and their accomplishments in the activity rather than focusing on describing the activity itself. Okay, now the scholarship section. So all UC campuses will offer scholarships for students who meet certain criteria. The applicant should review each scholarship choice and select all of those that match the characteristics, interests, and background. There is no limit to the amount of scholarships that a student can select. We encourage students to research other campus-based scholarships in the link provided at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so now the additional comment section. Um, so this one is after the personal insight questions. 
Students can use this additional comment section to explain any situation, circumstance, or experience that does not appear anywhere else in the application or is not fully explained in the application. For example, students can use this space if they have been significantly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The additional comment section is not required as part of the application, and therefore applicants who do not have something additional to share can just leave the section blank. The additional comment section is not an opportunity for an additional personal insight question response. Alrighty, so all of that is now done. It's time to review and submit. So before submitting the application, students will have the opportunity to review their uh, data in every section. A check mark will appear besides the section to indicate that that section is complete. Students will be prompted to correct any errors before they can continue with the submission process. We encourage all students to really take this section seriously and really submit the information that they're submitting as changes to the UC application may not be made after they've been submitted. Now missing information. Uh, students will be able to see if there's any missing information on the application after the warning screen. The screenshot on the left is an example of a student who's missing math and science subject area requirements. And the screenshot on the right is a transfer applicant missing their gap in education information. Okay, so student is ready to hit submit. Now let's talk about um, the summary billing and the fee waiver. For US citizens or permanent residents, um, the application fee is $70 per campus. For international and non-immigrant applicants, the application is $80 per campus. If an international or non-immigrant student currently attends another school in the US, they may be eligible to pay the lower application fee of $70 per campus. The application tool will advise of the fee amount on this page. A fee waiver is automatically calculated for California and domestic residents. The fee waiver calculator is activated from the answers that were entered in the applicant's family size and income. If a fee waiver is granted, the applicant must select yes to accept the fee waiver. If an applicant decides not to answer those questions, they may qualify for a fee waiver, but would not receive one. So it's very important that a student does enter the information in that about you section in order to be considered for the fee waiver. If an applicant makes a mistake on the family income amount, they can correct the information with an edit button. Eligibility for the fee waiver will automatically recalculate with the revised information. For US citizens or permanent residents or students who have attended a California high school for the last three years, if the students meet the low income criteria used to qualify for a fee, free and reduced lunch, they will qualify for a UC application fee waiver that is good for up to four campus choices, uh, but they would be responsible for payment for any additional campuses to which they choose to apply to. Students in California on a visa are not eligible for the UC application fee waiver. UC also accepts College Board, ACT, or NAC Act fee waivers. Uh, only one fee waiver must may be used. For payment, um, a fee payment is required and non-refundable. Payment may be submitted by credit card in the application tool or by mail. Um, mailing a check or the fee waiver that was either received by College Board, ACT or NACAC um, if a student did not qualify for the UC application fee waiver but met the criteria established by the waiver provider. Okay, after that, there is a uh, release authorizations and the statement of integrity. Um, so the application cannot be submitted without the applicant's electronic signature and acknowledgement of the statement of integrity. This statement is to affirm that all information in the application is accurate and the personal insight responses were written by the applicant. If information is withheld, such as poor grades or falsification is detected, the application is subject to cancellation. Some releases. You'll review and check the release authorizations to share application information with scholarship agencies, parents or guardians, counselors, and or UC organizations and alumni groups. 
The student must electronically sign and date the application to verify accuracy and acknowledge that the applicant is the author of their personal insight questions. The applicant is asked for an electronic signature to authorize the release of official examination scores if submitted to all the UC campuses to which a student applied. Information in the application is subject to verification. So if an applicant is selected for verification, noncompliance will result in cancellation of the application and the application fee waiver is not refunded. Okay, now submission confirmation. The students should keep their application ID number in a secure place, as this is what will be used throughout the admissions process, including decision release occurring in the spring. This screen will show the complete list of campuses that were applied to, the fees, the fee waiver, the application ID number, the date submitted, and the payment method. You can make only a few changes to your application once it's been submitted. Um, so this will include updating the student's contact information or their exam scores. They can also apply to additional campuses if application window is still open to those campuses. To make any of these changes, they'll be able to go to the application status section. Additionally, under application status, California resident students are notified if they meet the top nine local context or ELC criteria. Minor changes to activities, awards, volunteer work, employment, or personal insight responses are unlikely to have an impact on admission decision. However, if a student does have a significant update in any of these areas, they must notify each campus directly. Test scores on the SAT or ACT are not an admissions requirement. So if a student did report any scores, those may be updated, but they're not required for admission. Okay, so let's talk about the personal insight questions just really briefly, um, and then we'll move into the question and answer section. So the PIQs are a section um, that a student can use to share any accomplishments, experiences, talents, decision-making, problem-solving, or any contextual information. The PIQs are best utilized to share individual student information to help admissions readers hear the student in their own words, learn about the student's achievement, perspective, and environment that cannot or has not been shared in other parts of the application. Students should answer the questions that are most applicable to them. First years will choose four out of the eight questions and transfer students must ask to answer one required question and then pick three others. There is a maximum of 350 words per response and all questions have equal value in our reviews. Okay, so the purpose of the PIQs, if we can get the next slide, uh, the purpose of the PIQs is to allow the students to tell their own story in their own words. This is going to help admissions readers understand what is important to the applicant. Academic performance is going is always going to be one of the most important aspects of the UC application, but we also want to know not only how well an applicant is doing, but why applicants make certain choices. We want to understand how a student thinks beyond how well they perform. UC always talks about context. We know that every student is different. Even twins have different experiences. We want to know as much about the applicant as we can. Remember that UCs will not read rec recommendation letters unless they've been requested by a campus. The PIQs are the primary opportunity for students to tell UC admissions readers about themselves in their own voice. It's important for applicants to be their own best self-advocate in their response. More details and guidance on the personal insight questions can be found on the University of California website under how to apply, applying as a freshman, and personal insight questions. So there's some more information there as well. And now our tips on filling out the PIQ. Um, there is no perfect formula for a strong PIQ. Rather, students should focus on providing information and context about themselves that we don't already have. There is no particular topic that a student must write about. Leadership is a broad, broadly defined thing. So it may be um, that the student held an officer position of a club or organization. Maybe they were a leader of a sports team. Maybe they've had a familial responsibility. Maybe they support themselves, et cetera. 
Students can write within reason using their natural voices. This is not an academic essay. It is strongly encouraged for students to speak from the I standpoint. Students should utilize narrative opportunities as best that they can. So descriptions of extracurricular activities, awards or honors, special programs, um, and additional comment sections or their PIQs. While each response is brief, a lot can be said. So a lot of context can be provided. Avoid repetition. If something has already been addressed elsewhere in the application, use the available space for either a different topic or highlighting a different perspective of the same topic. We consider content, not necessarily the structure. So this isn't about impressing us with writing skills, poetry, comedy, or creative writing. Make use of all narrative components on the UC application. So topics mentioned in the PIQs that are not mentioned anywhere else. For you all as counselors, um, here are some helpful tips for how to support a student. Start with the first draft by talking it out loud. Writing similarly to a journal entry and without concern for word count. Make sure that a student is taking sufficient breaks between drafts and review, reviews and proofreading. The whole application should reveal good representation of the applicant's interests in and outside of the classroom. Make sure that the responses provide a lens through which um, we can help understand other components of the application. Students should put their best foot forward and be their own best advocate. As you're proofreading, ensure that it makes sense to the readers using appropriate language, grammar, and no extra words. Remember that students can write about whatever topics they would like. And what's most helpful is to understand the student in their own words from their own perspective. Help students in highlighting interests that may or may not be in a class. And keep in mind that there is no misconception conception that students are not allowed to write about in their identities, ideals, values, or beliefs. While not true, it is more important to focus on how these have impacted the student or why they're important to that student. And those are all my tips, and I'll go ahead and hand it back over to Lindsay to help us out with the Q&A section. Thank you, Jeanette, for your very thorough walkthrough of the UC application and the personal insight questions and for sharing some tips along the way. So we do have some time left today uh, to answer some questions. So Jeanette, let's look at the Q&A and see what questions we can take. So now if anybody wants to put any questions, go ahead and do that. Um, I do know that there were some questions about students doing dual enrollment programs um, and whether they should list the classes they're doing through dual enrollment as the high school or the college. Jeanette, would you like to answer that question? Sure. Um, so yes, some students may participate in dual enrollment programs. Um, and so it's helpful for students to include those college courses that they completed through dual enrollment on the UC application. So again, going back to those slides we were talking about the first year application, um, they would select the college or university that was participating in that dual enrollment program, as well as the courses that they completed during that time. Thanks. So there were also some um, questions about like first choice majors and alternate majors. So can a student put like a first choice major as something like psychology and then an alternate, can their alternate be undecided if they haven't decided yet? Is that something we can consider them for? Yeah, absolutely. So at UC San Diego, we do admit students as undecided or undeclared. Um, so it's very much possible for a student to select a first choice major. Uh, maybe they haven't really decided what a good alternate choice major may be that would get them to their career goal. Um, so they can definitely select undecided or undeclared as their second choice major. Um, and that wouldn't impact admission decision. Thanks, Jeanette. Um, I can answer this next question that came in to um, another question kind of about a dual enrollment program. If a community college offered high school summer school classes on like the high school campus, should it be listed as an additional school or under the high school name? And so that really comes down to the transcript. And so if the student will be receiving a transcript from the community college, 
um, with that course and the grade and the units and everything on there, um, showing that it is a course from the community college, then they should proceed with reporting it as a community college class on their application since they do have a transcript for that. If it is just a high school course, it's only going to show on their high school transcript, then they'll want to report that as a high school course um, that they completed, even if it was taught maybe by a community college professor. Um, so if they are getting that college transcript, we encourage them to report it as a college course so that we can consider that it was an, a college course they completed. All right. And then, Jeanette, there was a question, too, just about, um, you know, I think you, you mentioned we don't admit by major. And so there was questions if there's a place to see admit rates by major. So for um, the first year, for first year admissions, those um, those data points are not necessarily available. Um, however, for the transfer side, if you are working with transfer students, you can see transfer admit rates by major for all of the University of California campuses. Um, you would simply look up transfer admit by major University of California. Um, typically that first link that comes up is gonna be the one that will kind of guide you to that. And it'll have some information on each of our campuses per um, per uh, application term, uh, with some information to go um, to go along with the applications that we're getting, as well as the admit rates there. Thank you, Jeanette. All right, we will pause just for a few more seconds to see if we have any additional questions that anyone would like to submit. Right, and you, we do have some links that were um, provided in the, the chat section as well. So if you wanted some additional information about our capped majors, um, some additional tips for the personal insight questions, those links have been dropped in the chat. So please feel free to take those and share them with your students as well. Um, we are so happy that you joined us today. Um, I do encourage you here to take a screenshot or a photo of this page. This is the contact information for the UC Application Center. Um, and this is great for future reference. So it includes hours of operation, the phone numbers, email addresses that you and your students can reference if you have any questions related to actually filling out the application itself and the logistics of that. So I encourage you to reach out to the UC Application Center using this information. And as always, um, here at UC San Diego, we are also a resource to you. So we encourage you um, to email us at admissionsreply at ucsd.edu with any questions that you have. We also invite you to visit our counselor webpage for resources, upcoming events that we may have, and more. Um, this webinar, we did get a question whether this webinar will be available. And the recording of today's presentation will be available on our counselor website. Um, it does take time for it to be processed and available, but it will be available to you in the future on that website, so you'll have access to it then. But thank you all so much for joining us today, and we wish you a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you.